Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to the wonderful people here on the island of Davis, those in St. Crit, St. Christopher, and those who are throughout the Caribbean region. Good evening to our friends and family in the United States, Canada, United Kingdom, wherever you are. Good evening to you. It's a beautiful, beautiful evening here in Nevis. The temperature is absolutely perfect. The weather is perfect. And for those of you who are still maybe now in March suffering some winter blues, I invite you to come home and uh, to see what Nevis has to offer. There's a lot to talk about, lots of excitement on the island. We have Culture Armor 50 and our homecoming celebration that is heating up. And uh, we are certainly looking forward to a fantastic time. As part of that, the government has undertaken some uh, significant work at the cultural village and at the cultural complex to ensure that we have a most comfortable and inviting experience for our patrons. We anticipate, of course, those who are home and those who are coming, those from St. Kitts, those who are coming from around the region, and those who are coming home from farther field. So we look forward very much to that and for Culture Armor. And uh, I am delighted to be here to bring you information, to take your calls, and to have a conversation with you that I think is very important. So good evening, once and all, one and all. For those who are tuning, you're listening to Von Radio, the Eastern Caribbean's only powerhouse at 860 on your AM dial. For those who are listening, you can do it via the internet. You can do it via Facebook, via YouTube. We have all these channels. And now we're streaming live so you could actually see me while you listen and while you talk to us. And so we are grateful for you who are here. A few people have contacted me this evening already to say that they're tuning in. Some from New York, some from St. Martin. And I say good evening to all of you. And thank you for joining the show and being a part of the show. As usual, at the top of the show, I bring a few issues to the table, a few updates. And then, of course, we open the lines and invite your calls. I invite you when you call in to have your points ready to say what you need to say to engage where there is an opportunity for engagement, but really to bring the issues to the fore. This is a big platform. A lot of people tune in across the world uh, on a weekly basis to listen to this show, to engage, and to talk about matters that are impacting the country of St. Kitts and Nevis and the region and the world. We have no topics here that are off limits. We try our very best to debate and discuss whatever may come to the fore because we feel that this show, like many others, is an important part of our freedom of expression, an important part of freedom of speech, encouraging our people to call and to articulate their views. And no matter how passionate you are, passion is useful, but we ask you never to be disrespectful. Uh, we ask you to engage and to engage in a way that brings value to all of us. We are constantly trying to upgrade our image locally, regionally, internationally. We are constantly trying to upgrade how we engage with each other. We are, after all, a very civilized and a very educated people. And so we need in our conversations to display that. Even when we don't agree, we need to be able to disagree without being disagreeable. And so this show seeks to achieve that. We don't always get it right, I hasten to say. But certainly that's our goal, and we continue to work towards that. So thank you all for tuning in. Uh, please share the live and get as many people as you can on the show. We like when there's a conversation. It happens, of course, live because people are commenting. And uh, I welcome all of those who are commenting as well. Now, we have, as I said, some ground to cover. Let me start this evening by sending... Uh, general congratulations to all those who may be celebrating, as I like to say at the top of the show. When I get the information, I share it. If I don't get it, please forgive me. But general information for those who might be celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or any significant milestone or event. Those who are struggling in some way, I send you my thoughts and prayers. Those who might be hospitalized or sick. And certainly to those who have lost loved ones, we extend our deepest condolences to you. And trust and hope that the prayers of family and friends will certainly uphold you at this difficult time. God, of course, is the great comforter. And may we all turn to him in these times of difficulty. Thank you again for being part of the show this evening. And as I said, please share the live so that we can engage. Now, I start with some good news. And I'm very pleased to say that today I was sent some information from our friends at the Hearts and Hands for Nevis in New York. Hearts and Hands for Nevis is having their 24th anniversary luncheon. 24 years they've been doing this. And that is they're doing it under the theme Youth at Work. 
Their special guest performances will be by Abena Amri, the songstress, and King Hollywood, our Kaiso King here in Nevis. The event will take place on Saturday, April 13th at the LaGuardia Marriott Hotel from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Tickets are $125. And we're asking, please, that you donate, you contribute, you get involved because they do fantastic work. They're one of these organizations in the diaspora that really does great work. For tickets, let me just pull it up, the fine print here. You can go to Facebook, Hearts, Hands for Nevis, Inc. But for tickets, you can call A. Clark Sutton, 646-734-9716. D. Pemberton, 917-754-3643. A. Marion, 347-623-3642. And my former teacher, E. Williams King, 347-315-1749. So those are the numbers to call. Let me just say them again. A. Clark Sutton. 646-734-9716 D. Pemberton 917-754-3643 A. Marion 347-623-3642 or E. Williams King 347-515-1749 and those are the numbers to call to get tickets for the Hearts and Hands for Nevis luncheon their theme Youth at Work Youth at Work and this will happen on Saturday April 13, 2024 from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. at LaGuardia Marriott Hotel Hearts and Hands is one of the leading diaspora organizations it has always always been there to serve the people of Nevis and the wider Federation and I invite you please to support them and to support them as best as you can we continue to build bridges with our people in the diaspora and I thank all of those in hearts and hands NevDC uh, NevCan in Canada all of the organizations that continue to contribute in a significant way I believe there's one in South Florida the name eludes me at the moment but so many organizations Nevision and Ketition uh, national and local that continue to contribute and so we welcome those in the diaspora who continue to contribute and I ask you please to go out and support Hearts and Hands they've done fantastic work the 24th luncheon on April 13th please reach out buy a ticket or two and support their worthy worthy efforts and so congratulations to them all and I thank them for their continued contribution now there's a lot that's happening let me take a moment to congratulate uh, my daughter Gabriella Brantley she put on with her team, uh, her co-director, the Honorable Janel Nisbet, and the entire team, a fantastic event, uh, Nevis Youth Careers Expo. They took over the cultural village and put on a really top-class event. This is the third year, I believe, that they're doing this event. And this was her brainchild while she was still away at university. She organized this event from afar. She's now back home and is putting this together and working with the Honorable Janel Nisbet and a team of volunteers. And what I love about it is that it's young people seeking to provide guidance to other young people. Sometimes when people my age speak to young people, they tune out because they can't identify with those who are from the older generation. But Youth Helping Youth, I think, is a very important initiative. And I want to commend Gabriella for her excellent work in the community, for her effort in this regard to try to guide other youth. And uh, the rapport that they have and the rapport that I saw when I visited was certainly something to marvel at because this was young people talking to young people, young people engaging with young people, talking about university, talking about experiences, talking about jobs and availability, and certainly about professions and what they can do in terms of careers. I think it's an excellent initiative, and I want to congratulate the entire team for a very, very successful event and look forward certainly to next year, which we hope would be even bigger and better. I just want to commend the church ground community. Um, they are undertaking some work there at the church ground basketball court. I am told that church ground is going to be having a massive reunion of all those coming home for Culture Armor 50 and that that will be the venue for quite a few of the activities. So I want the people of church ground to know that certainly they can count on me as the area representative and as the Premier of Nevis to do all that I can to ensure that their facilities are in good order so that when 
the church grounders come home, they can certainly look forward to celebrating with each other and having a very good time. We're expecting a lot of people to come home for our homecoming and Culture Armor 50. So we look forward very much to engaging and to be able to see all of our people here and for them to see and experience all that is happening on the island. As I indicated at the top of the show, we'll be doing uh, some extensive works at the Culture Armor Village and at the Culture Armor Complex, all in an effort again to ensure greater comfort of our patrons. That work should start very shortly and we hope that when it starts, I've said to those involved that we need to get it completed in good order and in good time. Now tomorrow is the start, I'm told, of our AgriFest. If I'm correct, I hope I have the, the, the date and the time correct on this. But yes, tomorrow we start our AgriFest. The AgriFest is a celebration of all things agriculture. In fact, last week, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, our Deputy Premier and Minister of Agriculture, was on the show. He took over the show with his team to talk about AgriFest and all that they were doing, it, all that they are doing. It will be at the ETW Park because that's the largest venue that we have available and we understand it will be a significant event showcasing all aspects of agriculture. All that we are doing in agriculture, food security, uh, our deployment of technology in terms of shade house and uh, other techno te technological advances that the farmers here are now using, but also looking at animal farming uh, I'm told that usually they have a fun raffle where they raffle um, a, a cow, I believe, and, and, and a pig or something of that nature. So there's a lots of fun there. We anticipate, of course, having our friends from Station Sabre who come each year. We're hoping they can come and that they will stay for the entire two days of the event and spend a weekend with us. So we are anticipating a large crowd. We expect, of course, our friends and family from St. Kitts to come over in large numbers as well. This is our premier exhibition of all things agriculture. And we very much look forward to this fantastic event. It is a very significant event. It requires significant investment and coordination. And I want to publicly congratulate the Honorable Eric Evelyn and his team, P.S. Huey Sergeant, Director of Agriculture, uh, Randy Elliott, and their entire team. They work really hard to put this event together, and I anticipate that this event will be excellent. So I ask you to go out, please, see what we're doing. We are serious in Nevis about food security. We are serious about food sovereignty. We are serious about achieving our 25 by 25 targets together with St. Kitts uh, as set by CARICOM. And we feel very strongly that agriculture has to be an important part of our economic matrix on the island of Nevis. And so we look forward very much to you coming out and supporting our farmers, supporting the Ministry and Department of Agriculture, and seeing what is happening in Nevis. We like to say something good is happening in Nevis, and I can tell you, agriculture has certainly been on the rise on the island with more people, particularly young people getting involved, and more technology being deployed. Lots of shade house now, um, Grow, growing is being done. We, we see things like leafy greens, lettuce and the like. Uh, our farmers are fanning out. In fact, I was at a supermarket uh, in St. Kitts recently and I saw greens uh, on the supermarket shelves that emanated from Nevis. And so my goal and the goal of this government is to ensure that most of what we're eating on our plates at our hotels and our restaurants is grown locally. They talk about uh, farm to plate. That's what we're seeking to achieve. We know that our food is better quality. We know that it's fresh. We know that it's more tasty than the imported variety. And that's why we are moving in that particular direction. That's why we have outlined plans to move in terms of poultry production as we continue to diversify our local economy away from our heavy dependence on tourism and now to involve other sectors of the economy, agriculture, but to twin agriculture with tourism so that the food that is being produced is making its way into our restaurants and our hotels and into our homes, that we can cut back on the amount of imported food, poor quality, I might add, imported food that we are bringing in. And so people here can eat healthier, and we are hopeful that that leads to better lives. It leads to us having a healthier society as a whole. And so we look forward very much to your participation. And again, I say kudos to the Honorable Minister and his team. Now, 
I want to shift gears to send congratulations to the Honorable Troy Liburd and his team uh, at the Ministry of Education and in the Ministry of Sport. I want to certainly congratulate him, our prominent secretary in the Ministry of Education, Zanella Claxton, Mr. Zanella Claxton, and our director of sport, Mr. Um, Claxton as well. Um, I, you know something, I'm here struggling. Jamir Claxton. Uh, the reason I'm struggling is because he uses uh, some fancy Italian name on social media. So Giovanni. But Jamir Claxton, who's been there as our director of sport, and the entire team, because I know it was a large, large team effort to make this happen. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the staging for the very first time of the Sinkitz Nevis High School TDC-sponsored track meet. And uh, that track meet happened over four days, two days on St. Kitts and the final weekend on Nevis. The reason why it moved to Nevis this year was because the Kim Collins Stadium in St. Kitts is under repairs and would not have been ready in time. And it set off a flurry of discussion. And this country, as I like to say, we have a very robust and raucous democracy where everybody has an opinion. And so we have, of course, people taken to social media, having a lot to say about whether or not Nevis could host such an event. I smile. I didn't engage with it, but I smile. And the reason I smile is because, in my humble opinion, the inter-primary sports that has occurred on Nevis for decades now, that inter-primary sport, we call it the Mini Olympics, is in my humble opinion the largest single local sporting event in the federation let me say it again the inter-primary our mini olympics is the largest single local sporting event in the federation now you may get of course cricket cpl etc with large crowds but in terms of a locally organized event i don't know that there's one larger than the inter-primary in Nevis. And that inter-primary has been hosted successfully in Nevis for the past few decades. So I had no doubt that our team was accustomed to large crowds, our team was accustomed to dealing with athletes and would have the necessary procedures and infrastructure in place to accommodate them. And they did not disappoint. The Sinkitz Nevis, the Sinkitz -Nevis uh, Amateur Athletics Association, it was their meet and they utilize the Mondo track in Nevis. And I want to thank them for that. I believe that it was a good decision, that they had a good meet in Nevis, and that whilst everything wasn't perfect, that on balance, the meet was a success. And all the reports that I've had suggest that the meet was a success, that people came, people had a good time. Of course, the Charles E. Mills Secondary School from the Sandy Point area, they emerge victorious. They are certainly the team to beat, and I commend them, their coaches, their principal, the staff, the teachers, and the athletes, of course, who did phenomenally well. They won by some distance. And then I commend the Charleston Secondary School, which came in second, and which continues to improve its performance. I commend also the Gingerland Secondary School. I think GSS placed fifth, if I recall, uh, overall. And so they did remarkably well also. They are, of course, one of the smaller schools, and they did quite well. I want, however, to say that the mere fact that we could have this meet in Nevis at all is as a result of this government's initiative to place the Mondo track there in the first place. It was not a decision that was without controversy. Because the opposition in Nevis made a huge song and dance about that facility being put there. Oh, it's too close to the dump. Oh, flies. Oh, the stench. Oh, this. Oh, that. They said a lot of things. They have gone on in later years once the facility was put down to say, oh, there's no stadium. There's no this. There's no that. But here we had in 2024 when our biggest sister St. Kitts could not accommodate this event, Nevis was there to rescue. Nevis was there to allow our athletes an opportunity to perform on an IAAF certified Mondo surface. Nine lane, one of the few nine lane surfaces in the region, tracks in the region. 
state-of-the-art surface that we laid a few years ago and that really has allowed our students in Nevis to perform at a higher level insofar as athletics is concerned. Now, I don't believe that there's any real legitimate debate that can suggest otherwise. If you remember, our children were forced to run on grass, and if there was no rain falling, they ran on dirt. That was the standard that was hitherto existing on Nevis. This government said no. We can't talk about youth and promoting our youth. We can't talk about sport and promoting sport and leave our children to run on dirt and grass. And so we conceptualized, we came up with, and we built that facility. That facility was managed in terms of its construction by Timothy Keynes, who offered his services as a former athlete and somebody passionate about the sport. And we got him involved, and that facility was delivered in pristine condition. Do we have other things we can do there in terms of a stadium, in terms of additional seating, additional facilities? Absolutely. But I want us to reflect on where we have come and from whence we have come. Because sometimes when I hear our people speak, we engage in a type of narrative that suggests that all things must happen at once and a narrative that forgets where we're coming from. So it is not that we have transformed from running on dirt and grass and running barefoot to getting to a world-class IAAF certified, I want to emphasize that. So these young people are running on a track that is certified by the International Association responsible for athletics. That is the quantum leap that we have made in Nevis. But yet it seems for some impossible for them to say, this is well done. This is pleasing because it allows our children the most fundamental aspect of their athletic development, which is a proper surface on which to practice and on which to run. And so you hear all the chalala. Oh, but you, know, you need this too. And oh, you need that too. And ignoring the reality that it is the existence of this track that has now propelled our children to the next level. I told someone recently, I said, you know, we have to give credit to some of our young athletes from the past. Because imagine the transition they had to make from running on dirt and grass, barefoot in some cases, to then having to go to St. Kitts or to try to go to Carifta or to try to go anywhere else to now run on a proper surface. Now, I am no expert. But I would have thought that your performance would be better when you are practicing on the type of surface that ultimately you will have to run in. Whether it is Carifta or if you are talented enough to get to the Olympics. There is no dirt track at the Olympics and at Carifta. Even in St. Kitts for years, the athletes had an edge because they had the capacity to practice at the Kim Collins Stadium. To know what it's like, to get the feel for what it is like to run on a proper surface. Nevis made that transition. And I am very pleased that I was involved with that and shepherding that project to fruition. It now stands there. Well lit, well prepared, and the project speaks for itself. And sometimes vision is not recognized immediately. So we must reflect that this year in 2024, had the Mondo track not been there, what would have happened to the TDC Inter High? Would they have done it running on dirt in St. Kitts somewhere? So certainly I feel that we ought to recognize that investments such as these pay dividends over the long term. And we as a government will continue to build out that infrastructure as we see fit and as resources permit. But we are happy that we are seeing an incremental enhancement 
of the capacity and ability of our athletes now that they're being exposed to a proper surface, a world-class certified surface on which to train and on which to run. I don't think that that can even be debated. And so, again, kudos to Minister Leibert and his entire team. Kudos to the St. Kitts Nevis uh, Amateur Athletic Association, Mr. Delwyn Delaney, I think, who is the man there. And their team, they had an army of volunteers that came over. And we are happy that the Mondo facility in Nevis could provide the necessary relief. In fact, some are now saying the sport was so good that we should think about alternating it between St. Kitts and Nevis every year or every two years, as the case may be. That's a matter for the organizers. But I'm happy and proud as a Nivision and as the Premier of Nevis that we were able to deliver a first-class meet on the weekend just gone. And that, I think, speaks for itself. So for all of those who are still bent on the negativity, I believe the proof of the pudding is always in the eating. The track was there, people were commenting on the track was fast, a lot of records were broken, and we did an excellent job. So kudos to Nevis. Kudos to Nevis, because I believe that we showed that we are accustomed to hosting large events, and this event was no exception. We now look forward with some anticipation to the Mini Olympics, which we anticipate is going to be even bigger and better, and we extend that invitation to our brothers and sisters from St. Kitts to come over and to be a part of it. Now, let me move on to one or two other matters. We had a very significant ceremony at the Van Sambre International Airport last week, Friday. And that ceremony had to do with the return of Winnie from St. Martin with a direct flight from St. Martin to Nevis. Winnie will currently fly into Nevis on Friday night Friday evening, leaving St. Martin at around 6 p.m. Saturday, leaving St. Martin at the same 6 p.m. Sunday, leaving St. Martin at 6 p.m. It will leave Nevis the following morning. So it will leave Nevis Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Monday morning at 8 a.m. It means, therefore, that for our divisions living in St. Martin, you can now hop on that plane Friday evening, and be back in St. Martin Monday morning in time for work. It also says to Nivisions wanting to go to St. Martin for the weekend that they can hop on that plane early Saturday morning, 8 a.m., be in St. Martin by 9, and they can come back either that night at 6 or they can come back Sunday night at 6. So they have the opportunity as well to go down and see family and friends. So we're inviting those in St. Martin, not just Nivisions there, but also St. Martiners, to come over and spend the weekend in Nevis, play some golf, have some great food, reconnect. Because that's what I think Winnie allows us to do, is to reconnect with St. Martin. We are inviting those here who want to go to St. Martin to shop, those who desire some French food or want to go and pick up a few items, that again, there is that possibility to get off this island early Saturday morning and to come back Sunday evening. So you have the entire weekend available to you. More than that, what I think Winnie provides is the extent of connectivity with other airlines and to get us to other parts of the world. Winnie is, by our standard here in Nevis, we usually accommodate the smaller planes, a 19-seater. And Winnie allows us now leaving here on the weekends to connect with flights that are heading out. Winnie connects with Copa to Panama. That opens up all of Central and Latin America. Winnie connects to JetBlue, which is going to New York. Winnie connects to United Airlines. Winnie connects to American Airlines, several flights to Miami and to New York. Winnie connects, connects I'm sorry, to Air France, to Charles de Gaulle in Paris. Winnie collects to KLM, which is taking it straight in to Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. And Winnie also allows you same day seamless connections to Tortola, to St. Bart's, to Antigua, to Seba, to Stacia. You can leave Nevis, for example, on Saturday morning at 8, and you're in St. Bart's by 10 a.m. 
So there is a host of new opportunities for travel, intra-regional, but also international travel. Now, of course, St. Kitts will continue to be the main hub for Nevis. But what we are seeking to do at Van Samri, as part of our plan to develop that facility, is also to say to airlines, listen, it is time to come back. It is time to service this airport. It is time to service the people of Nevis. It is a time to allow our people, particularly around the region, to be able to travel more easily to come home and allow our people here to travel to go and visit friends and family. It is also important to allow people to have other avenues, other routes that they can use to get to our island. So tomorrow, for example, if you're planning to come from New York and the flights into Sinkits are full or the pricing is not to your liking, then you can try going through St. Martin, connecting with Winnier, and you're here seamlessly. The other thing that I am fascinated about with Winnier is the fact that they now have code share arrangements with quite a few airlines. So, for example, if you are leaving Nevis and you're going to Europe, you can check your bags in at the Vance Amory Airport on Winnier, and you connect to Air France in St. Martin to Charles de Gaulle in Paris, or you connect to KLM, to Schiphol in the Netherlands, and you don't even have to worry about your bags. You pick them up in Europe because the smooth transition from that airline because of their code share arrangements. They can do the same, I'm told, with JetBlue. I believe they can do the same with American Airlines. And so you have now the possibility, oh, how could I forget? I forget that I have so many listeners in Canada. That through Canada, I believe Air Transat into Toronto and WestJet, that you can also get into St. Martin and connect with Winnier. And Winnier, the flight at 6 o'clock in the evening to Nevis on the weekends is well positioned because most of those flights are coming into St. Martin and landing and getting into St. Martin around 2, 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So by the time you clear and come through, you are ready to get on your plane to Nevis. And you come directly to Nevis and you're here in time for dinner. On the way out, similarly, because you're leaving here at 8 in the morning, you get down to St. Martin before 9, you have ample opportunity to have a leisurely breakfast there, and then you're ready to check in for your flight going to Miami, going to New York, going to Canada, going to uh, France, going to Netherlands, uh, going to all parts of the United States. And so we feel that this is an excellent opportunity and we are asking our people to use the service. The last time Winier was here, Winier actually departed Nevis in 2019. The reason for that was they complained about low loads that our people weren't using the service enough and so for them they could put the equipment elsewhere. I have said to Winnie that as Premier of Nevis I am prepared to do all that I can to encourage our people to use that service to the point where it is not just a weekend service it is a daily service and hopefully we can get to the point where we have multiple flights per day. I say that because when I look for example at Sabre and Stacia I look at the fact that they have sometimes two flights a day from St. Martin, and I say to myself, you know what? Nevis can do likewise. We just need to believe and to support. We are having conversation with other airlines. I want our people in St. Croix to know that we have initiated conversations with a few different providers, carriers, to see that we can ensure that our people in St. Croix have a necessary bridge to get to and from Nevis. That's critical for us. Of course, we currently have KPA flying daily from St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. But the people from St. Croix complain that St. Croix is far away from St. Thomas. It is expensive for them to get from St. Croix to St. Thomas and then to Nevis. So we are working and almost on a daily basis 
our nationals in St. Croix reach out to ask me what's happening. Well, I can tell you that we are not yet in a position to make an announcement, but we are working at it. And we hope to have some good news for you very soon. Similarly, we are having conversations with other airlines about rebuilding the bridge to Puerto Rico. That air bridge that we had before through Silver Airlines, uh, then we had something with trade wind aviation, and all of those have gone away as the Van Samri Airport fell into decline. We are now committed, ladies and gentlemen, to restoring that airport. We think it's important on a number of fronts, but most importantly, to ensure connectivity for our people and for the guests that decide that they want to come to the island of Nevis for a holiday. And so we are working on that, and we have had a very successful second town hall meeting. We recognize that the first town hall meeting was not very successful because of the difficulties that we had there. The presenter at the time that should have been there could not make it. And so the chap who did speak, unfortunately, his English was not very good. And so the meeting did not go as well as we had planned. The second meeting that we had at the Franklin Brown Community Center went much better. And uh, I am very happy. I want to commend the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, whom I and this government had the confidence in to ask him to lead that project, to be the liaison between the government, NASPA, the consultants, the ultimate contractors, the funding agencies, for him to engage. And thus far, he has done a remarkable job in getting us to where we are. And I believe that those who attended the Franklin Brown Community Center, they would have had a good idea of what the project is about. Now, for those who couldn't attend, let me just tell you what the project is about. We are going to lengthen our runway at the Van Samory International Airport. But not only are we going to lengthen it, we're going to strengthen it so that it can take heavier loads because we anticipate larger aircraft coming. We are catering largely for the Embraer 175 American flight that is currently servicing Anguilla and I'm told Dominica and the BVI from Miami. We anticipate that when we're done, we will be able to have direct flights using that smaller aircraft, what they refer to as a regional jet, coming out of Miami. And that jet is configured to take between 76 and 80 passengers. It is good news, and it suggests to us that we have a good plan because American has just ordered, it was in the news just two weeks ago, an additional 133 aircraft from Embraer, including 90 of the E-175s, which is the particular aircraft that we are looking at. In addition, when we are done, we will be able to accommodate most of the world's private jets, and we anticipate that as we build out our tourism infrastructure, as we seek to attract other high-end establishments and hospitality uh, offerings to the island, that people who, some already live in here, and some who may want to come here, will come on their private jets and therefore be able to land directly here from New York, from Miami, from wherever they may be coming from. Now, why is this important? This is important because based on studies we have looked at, the private jet travel market will, we are told, be as much as 29 billion U.S. dollars per year by 2029, just a few years from now. And of that, the vast majority is in the United States. And the United States is right next to us. So it seems to us a logical situation for Nevis to position itself that we can attract the private jet market. To do that, we need to enhance our terminal. We need to enhance our VIP uh, uh, offerings. And we are speaking to persons in that vein. We need to, of course, enhance our safety and security in terms of lighting, in terms of our tower, and also in terms of our fire uh, department over there and our fire fighting capability. And we also want to provide additional parking so that jets can park here so that they don't have to be parked elsewhere during the winter months when the owners of those jets are here at their villas in Nevis or here at the Four Seasons or wherever they may be. We also want to offer fuel because for a long time, even if jets landed here, they could not fuel, refuel here. 
So all of this is being put in train. And the idea really is that we will hope to extend our runway by some distance. Uh, we've had various um, indications, but I'm hopeful that by the end of it, we will get anywhere from 15 to 1,800 feet more than what we currently have. Not all of that will be useful for landing because we understand the Hurricane Hill is still an obstacle and impediment. And we are having and continue to have that debate as to whether it would make sense to remove some or all of Hurricane Hill. We have not yet taken any position that that should be done because we anticipate that it will be far more environmentally impactful. And so we are trying to go in the other direction, that is towards Nisbet Plantation, and uh, to create additional space going up to Hurricane Hill, which will not be useful for landing, but will be useful for takeoff. And as we know about aircraft, and as I'm learning about aircraft, they require far less space for landing than for takeoff. Takeoff is where they require more length. And so we anticipate that we will be able to accommodate the aircraft that we are targeting. And we expect that what we hope to be is to complement what is happening at RLB and to ensure that both airports work together. Neve is attracting who it is aiming to attract. Sink is attracting, of course, who it's aiming to attract. We still anticipate that Sink will be the primary gateway for Nevis in terms of larger aircraft, British Airways and all of those. But for current purposes, we expect that we'll be able to attract the Embraer 175. Why that is also useful? We know that other airlines like Inter-Caribbean use similar aircraft and they too will be able to land here. And wouldn't it be good, brothers and sisters, for you to get on a plane right here in Nevis and get off in Trinidad, get off in Barbados, we used to be able to have Liat come in here. Those days are over. Liat is over. And so we now need to look forward. And that is the level of investment that we are hoping to make. And so we are hopeful that our partners will work with us. We have had the Taiwanese have been here um, from the ICDF. They had a week-long visit to look at this project. Uh, we are hopeful that they will get involved with us. But we are committed as a government to making this project happen because we think it's an important project. What we are also doing is talking to the airlines. So Winnie has already come back. I've mentioned we're talking to people to come out of St. Croix. We're talking to people to come out of Puerto Rico. And we have initiated the conversations to come out of Miami. And so we are optimistic that this will happen. And I intend to engage with the, foreign, with the Minister of, of Tourism, the Federal Minister of Tourism and Aviation, the Honorable Marsha Henderson, and of course with the Honorable Prime Minister, so that they are very clear and up to date as to what the ambitions are in relation to this particular project. And so we look forward very much to engaging, we look forward to making this project a reality, and I invite you to come to the next town hall meeting when that is scheduled you would realize that we're taking the town halls into the villages, into the communities. We're not just having them at a central location in town. We are going out. So we had the first one in town. The second was in, one was in St. James. I'm not sure where the third one is going to be, but we're going to ensure we cover the five parishes to ensure that all who want to hear and all who have a view can share those views with us as we build out this infrastructure and take Nevis to the next level. I ask you to remember that last investment in the airport was over 20 years ago. So there's time now for us to upgrade and to bring this airport to a position where it can serve our people, because everything we do, we do for the Nivision people. And then it can also serve our guests. So our people at home and abroad, and those who are intending to visit, it is a critical part of infrastructure. And as we build out, you've seen our work on the roads, we are now looking to other infrastructure. You've seen our work at the Orly Water Taxi Facility. Now we're looking to other infrastructure. You've seen our work in water and water development and water storage. Now we're looking at other infrastructure. You've seen our work in electricity and buying diesel generators, cutting back on the number of outages, and we are now looking at other infrastructure. So this has been a rather deliberate plan on the part of the government, and we're now at a level where the airport is our focus and of course we anticipate being able to move forward there in short order so for those landowners in the area we thank them thus far for their cooperation we're happy 
that the majority, we have come to uh, an agreed position, and we're optimistic that we can conclude these transactions to get the construction started in the shortest possible time. All the agencies of government are on board, and we certainly look forward to consulting and ultimately to have those consultations inform our social and, env and environmental impact assessment and to be able to deliver this project to the people of Nevis. I would say a word to the opposition in Nevis. And the opposition in Nevis now comprises the NRP on the one side and then, of course, the Honorable Cleon Stapleton Simmons, who represents the people of St. Thomas's, on the other. And I just say to them that it is not everything we need to oppose. I say that because at the two town hall meetings we've had thus far, NRP's representatives and their agitators, should I say, their people who come out and agitate for them, on both occasions they've taken to the microphone to in my view, try to score political points. And I think that that is unnecessary. Unnecessary because whoever government is there, we need to develop the airport. Whichever government will need to develop the airport. It's either we develop it or we close it down altogether. Because currently in the last several years, and even COVID made it even worse, the airport has just not been functioning at an optimal level. But you still have to pay people at the tower. You still have to pay security. You still have to pay cleaners. You still have to pay airport manager. You have to incur costs with Nevlek, water, all of these charges, and no activity at the airport. In fact, I will say, and I think I can say publicly, that were it not for the Van Sammer International Airport, NASPA would have been a profitable organization. But because of the costs that you have to carry at the Van Samri Airport, with no traffic, no real revenue, NASPA has suffered and struggled as a result. So what we're doing is necessary. And wouldn't it be a good thing, brothers and sisters, if Nivisions, NRP, CCM, or whoever, could learn to stand together in relation to certain developments for the island, to say, yes, this is a good thing. And so come together in a way that when they come they offer suggestions to make it better as opposed to the constant criticisms i heard one of their usual spokespeople stand up at one of the meetings and say something about oh y'all spending all this money to allow five private jets from four seasons to come and park there and i'm saying well, what, what is that about it's about progress it's about moving us to the next level as an island and as a people just tonight, I posted on social media a photo that was sent to me of how the airport used to look before it was upgraded 20 years ago. And we recognize even then there was opposition. Some people had to be relocated, you recall, from the Newcastle area. There was opposition. But the airport served us well, and the infrastructure served us well for its time. It is now obsolete, and we have to invest. And so I'm asking the opposition, come on board. Because if you were in government, you would also have to upgrade the airport. Come on board. Offer your assistance to make this project work. Because at the end of the day, this is not a CCM project. This is a Nivision project. It's a project that will serve the people of Nevis, we hope, for the next 20 years and beyond. And so we ask you to come on board and stop this approach where every single thing it has to be negative, 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 criticize, criticize. I keep saying that criticisms are good. But if your entire approach is simply to criticize and you have no solutions that you're offering, then that is not leadership. That is not leadership because all of us can criticize. Which of us isn't able to look at the other person and find some fault on something wrong? But that's easy. Suggesting alternatives, suggesting improvements, putting country above self as we say we do, should be the approach that allows us to move forward. So that is where we are. It is 10 minutes to the hour of 9 o'clock. I have 
some other information. But I think I should pause now. The time is flying by tonight. And invite some calls from members of the public. The numbers are 869-469-1616 and 869-469-1700. As I wait for the phones to ring, I hope they will ring and ring and ring, let me go and say to you that we have had to constitute the Integrity Commission, and I will come back to that. Let me go to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Good evening, Michelle. Good evening to you, my dear. Galatians 3, verse 20 and 21. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law that against the promises of God, God forbid, for if there had been a law, given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Have a great evening. Thank you very, very much, my friend, and thank you as always for scripture of your choosing. We truly appreciate it, and thank you for always almost being the first. I believe 90% of the time you're our first call and you put us on the right track. Let me just now say a word while I wait for the phones to ring, so don't feel bad to interrupt me because I have opened the phones, 869-469-1616 and 869-469-1700. Let me just say a word about the Integrity Commission. As you know, we've had some two in and four in, some back in and forth in. I believe that we've now decided on a third commissioner so that the commission can be constituted here in Nevis and get on with its work. And so I am pleased, and that announcement will come in due course, but I believe that the public will be pleased that we have identified somebody who, I believe, has the necessary capacity, training, and ability uh, to be a member of that very important body. We have had a difficult time coming to that position because, of course, again, we have one member from the NRP, Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge, the Honorable Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge, and we have another member um, who is representing the people of St. Thomas's, the Honorable Dr. Cleon, the Honorable Cleon Stapleton Simmons, and um, they could not agree. Uh, in fact, I found it interesting that in a letter that I saw from the Honorable Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge, she said she did not know the whereabouts of the Honorable Cleon Stapleton Simmons. So it appears that they are like the, the Jews and the Samaritans. Um, they, are not, they are not meeting or seeing eye to eye. And as a consequence, uh, sadly, they could not come together to determine uh, a consensus position for that third commissioner. So we have had to use the legislation. Of course, we were forced to go into Parliament to amend the legislation to deal with that difficulty and we have now had to use the legislation but we are hopeful through that consultative process with them both that um, there will be no objections or no difficulties with the third commission and so the identity will be revealed in due course but I do believe that the people of Nevis will be pleased. Let me also announce that the good people of Upper St. John's, they want to emphasize Upper St. John's, for the Easter break we are having uh, white goods cleanup. We did it a few months ago, and there has been some demands for that to happen again. Uh, we are organizing it currently, and uh, it will cater to the people of Pond Hill, Cox, Coal Hill, Brown Pasture, and I believe we come down as far as well, of course, uh, you know, the areas there, Beach Road, etc. Um, all of those areas coming down, Hermitage. Um, and uh, we stop at church ground. That's as far down as we're going to come for the Easter. We're going to do it um, on the Saturday. Um, that is after the Saturday after Good Friday. And we are asking for people to put out uh, outside their yard all white goods, all stoves, all fridges, all microwaves, etc. And we will have the trucks come around and pick up. Uh, you can call, certainly, if you have something to be picked up or you can send a whatsapp my number is 662-6003 but the idea really is to clean up the community now the people of Lower st john's we are going to come back to you at a later date and so the people of brown hill bath stony grove etc we're going to come back to you at a later date but for this easter we are focusing on upper st john's so if you're in pond hill coal hill cox you're in beach road area 
you are in church ground, you're in hermitage, uh, you are who we are going to be focusing on on the Easter Saturday, let me call it that, the day after Good Friday. So we are going to be out in our numbers and we ask, of course, for volunteers, for people to come and help. This is a massive cleanup effort and we are hopeful that we can get it done. We're going to go to Law St. John's. St. John's, of course, is a big parish. We're going to go to Law St. John's where we can um, tackle uh, I did not mention Cain Garden, forgive me. So I said as far as us church gone, we're actually going as far as Cain Garden, so forgive me. The next wave is going to see Brown Hill Bath, Stony Grove, and the Braziers. So right now we're dealing with, with let me say it again, um, Pond Hill, Cox, Coal Hill, Beach Road. Uh, we're going to be dealing with Hermitage, uh, Church Ground, and Cain Garden in this round. So if you have white goods, please put them out uh, in time. Uh, use your Good Friday, use your Holy Thursday if you can and put them out so that our trucks can come by and pick them up. It's no cost to you. We will uh, come and collect. And of course, for those, as we did on the last occasion, those persons who might be elderly or unable, we will come into your yard and help uh, to move out what you need moved out in terms of white goods. But we are hopeful that people will help us by just putting them on the verges, putting them on the side, and we will bring the trucks and pick them up. We look forward very much to your cooperation as we try to clean up the community. I know that the Honorable Eric Evelyn would have done a very successful cleanup in Gingerland. I believe his was uh, a weekend or so ago, and I want to congratulate him. He has done an excellent job in that regard in his constituency, and we are going to do Upper St. John's on Easter Saturday. That's what I'm calling it, the day after Good Friday. Uh, that is next week, Saturday and we hope that you'll come out and be a part of that. The numbers again to call for tonight's program are 869-469-1616 and 869-469-1700. We'd love to hear your views on any of the issues that I've raised this evening or on anything that is impacting your mind and that you would like to put on the table. Those are the numbers to call. I often encourage people to call early. And the reason for that is because some people get in touch with me after 10 o'clock when the show is done and say they were trying to get in and couldn't get in. Well, we have time now that you can get in. And so we go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Mark, you didn't, ma you didn't mention Morningstar. Morningstar, forgive me. Forgive me. Let me say from Ponyl all the way down to King Garden. That's better? Yes. <laughs> because I keep trying to remember all the various areas. But yes, Morning Star would be included in the Upper St. John's portion that we're doing on Easter Saturday. Thank you. All right. You're most welcome. So all of you from Pond Hill to Cane Garden, you can put out your white goods. That is your old fridges, stoves, microwaves, uh, any of that type of, of thing that you have, and put it out on your your verges of your property we will come by we will collect it and dispose of it for you for free now this is good because ordinarily you would have to rent a truck and you'd have to go and pay at the landfill etc so we're taking all that burden from you we're actually coming to you and cleaning up the community but we ask for your help and if you have some time on saturday you can volunteer in fact if you have a little truck that you can come and help we're asking you to help. It is a community effort after all. And so I want to thank all of you who may be part of that and may be willing to lend your assistance that it will be very useful so that we can get this done. Nine o'clock, one hour to go. We're taking your calls. 869-469-1616 and 869-469-1700. Just a reminder that tomorrow is the start of our AgriFest. It's going to be a huge event. And we invite one and all to go out and be a part of it there at the ETW Park. It's over two days, Thursday and Friday. Now, next week on Tuesday, the 26th, I think, I hope I have that date right, we are going to have a sitting of the Nevis Island Assembly. I want to, before it becomes any matter of public discussion, to say that after we had sent out our notices, we received notice that the National Assembly is meeting on that same day. That is an oversight. It is something that has never happened before. And I believe it happened because on this occasion, there wasn't the degree of coordination that would usually happen. And so we have two sittings, one at the national level and one at the local level, both happening 
on the same day. Fortunately, the city in Nevis is only to have read for the first time a particular bill that is important and then to put it out for consultation and to hear statements from ministers. And so the anticipation is that those members in the Nevis Island Assembly who have duties as well at the National Assembly that they will be able to attend the National Assembly, but unfortunately to be there a bit later in the day. So we are hopeful that this doesn't happen again. This is the first time that it has happened. And so we hope that with better coordination that will not happen in the future. But no need for alarm. I believe that we have already worked things out. And because the sitting in Nevis is anticipated to be a short sitting, we won't have too much of a conflict for those members who need to go over. Of course, for the other members uh, from Nevis who are members of that house, they will be there for the start of proceedings in St. Kitts. And those who are members of the Nevis House will be in Nevis and then go over to St. Kitts for a later start. And so that is what is proposed. Ladies and gentlemen, you listen to On The Mark. For those who may have just tuned in, my name is Mark Brantley. I'm the Premier of Nevis. And I've been a proud host of this show for the last decade and a half or more. I, I keep saying all more because I'm really need to go back to find out when in fact this show had its first airing. Of course, prior to coming to the show, we did spend some time on Let's Talk on the Heavyweight Show, and that was a good ground, breaking ground for me in order for me to eventually end up here. The phones are ringing, the numbers to call 869-469-1616 and 469-1700. Is this okay? This caller hung up. Caller, please call back. We're just about to take your call. Uh, and again, a reminder, 869-469-1616, 869-469-1700. Those are the numbers to call. And so we hope that this caller who just uh, missed, we just missed, would call back and uh, share his or her views with us on any of the issues that we would have raised here uh, on the show this evening thus far. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there is, as I say, quite a lot that is happening. Um, the, the Premier's press conference will be happening uh, this month, as promised. We have said that we will do a press conference every month to keep our people updated. And so that is going to happen uh, on the 28th, I believe it is. Uh, the 27th, forgive me. Um, and we are having it this time around in the afternoon to accommodate uh, our schedule. It's the first time, but we will try to see how it works. So we, as always, are asking members of the press to come out and be a part of that. And so we certainly look forward to engaging with that as well. Now, um, while I've been talking, I had the opportunity to glance at my phone. And I usually do that when, of course, uh, the lines are engaged. But in glancing temporarily and momentarily at the phone, I came across some... Uh, how should I put it, some remarks that were being made uh, by persons here on Nevis and some on St. Kitts and our people sort of going back and forth about the experience of having the inter-high sports in Nevis, an event which, as I've said prior, was a resounding success. But some of the commentary coming has from St. Kitts and some commentators from St. Kitts has been, I think, very harsh. Uh, a lot of it has decried everything. Everything was horrible, horrible, horrible. Everything was terrible. And uh, still, the majority, in my view, of comments that have come from St. Kitts have been very positive. But unfortunately, sometimes a squeaky wheel is what gets the grease. And so you've had a back and forth where people from Nevis have made equally harsh comments. Uh, to their colleagues in St. Kitts. And I just want to encourage our people to seize and desist from that type of engagement. It is really unnecessary. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't assist any of us. And at the end of the day, it is destructive. Because we are one people. And the sooner we recognize that we are one people, the better. In fact, one of the comments that almost took me out, I had to go and take two Panadol when I saw the comments. Somebody said, that Nevis people must stay up there with a no KFC self. <laughs> and I thought that that was, that was amusing beyond measure. 
that you're actually cussing Nevis because we don't have KFC. So, you know, the comments sometimes I think are a little comical, but I'm encouraging our people to do better. Let me go back to the fort. Good evening, you're on the mark. Okay, Hello? This is, a, this is a different um, subject. Sure. If you happen to know, if they have, when, the, when is the agriculture exhibition in Nevis? I've been speaking about it already. It happens. Oh, starts, oh no, I, ju I just, listen, I call it some total. I just tune in. Okay, well, it starts tomorrow. And it goes for tomorrow and Friday. So it's a two-day, uh, the Agri Expo. Hello? Okay. Yeah, yeah, hearing you, yeah. hearing you, digest it. Okay. Yes. So it will happen, start tomorrow. It's, uh, of course, as you know, a very, very uh, large undertaking, a significant uh, event each year on the calendar. But we are hoping to showcase all things agriculture starting tomorrow. Okay, okay. Well, I have to plan from February next time. I'm going to have to. Well, I'm sorry you're missing it. Um, the Honorable Eric Evelyn was on air last week talking about it. So we're trying to get the word out. But certainly, if you can come at some other point, I think you'll be very impressed with what is happening in agriculture in Nevis. Uh, call, call, call it a little muffled. I'm not hearing you clearly. No, I said something. Do you have a mango festival as well? Yes, the mango festival is also happening this year, and I believe that the mango festival this year, I don't have the date in front of me, but I think it is in Ju June, um, just after the the music festival in St. Kitts, I believe. Oh, okay, okay. Um, mango I'll, festival. I'll, I'll, I'll keep in tune, and then I'll ask. Yes, so that would be very, very useful for you to come. The Mango Festival is July 5th to July 7th this year. July 7th. July okay. 5th to 7th. That's the Mango Festival. Okay? July 7th, is it? July 5th to 7th. July 5 to 7. Very up to the 7th. Okay, thank you very much, Rajiv. You're most welcome. Let's stick with the telephones and see if we have anybody else. Uh, good evening, you're on the mark. Good evening, you're on the mark. Good evening, Mr. Bentley. Yes, good evening to you. I just like to say thanks to the general public for the support that that they gave us for the cleaners that them on the track. Uh huh. Um, and I see Papa reports that um they rate us ten out of ten. Yes. So that we say a hundred percent. All the subjugating things that were saying on the track bathroom stink. Mm. But I feel so happy. I was full of pain. But when I see that 10 out of 10, that I feel so good, I, I went just keep. In, in the morning, I get up, I just keep smiling. Mm -hmm. So I like to, like to thank the general public, those from the Navy, that they come and support us, tell us we did an excellent job. I, I appreciate, appreciate that very much, and that will help us to prepare ourselves for interpermy. Coming up, so just let me say thanks to the general public for us to be behind us and supporting us. Well, thank thanks you very that. much. Um, and the reports were excellent. So I, I'm not recognizing the voice, but whoever you are, congratulations because all the reports I got were excellent. People said that you all did a fantastic job. And that is why I said at the start of the show that we usually host the Mini Olympics, which is far bigger than the Inter High. So, I know that our people are capable of delivering, and you all delivered, and so congratulations to you and the team, okay? Yeah, every morning I, I spoke to you, but I realize you, 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 you change, change your, your walking area, though. Oh, well, I go from different place to place, so, um, uh, hopefully... Your classmate, your schoolmate. Ah, okay, all right, good. Now I, now I know where I am. Okay. Uh, okay <laughs> all right, then. Take care, and thank you so much. Thank you. All right. All right. It, we are taking your call. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hello? Hello? Okay, we've lost that caller. Uh, callers, please be patient with us. We're trying to take your calls when you're calling. Do we have somebody on the line? Hello? Hello? Okay, the numbers are 869-469-1616 and 869-469-1700. When you call in, I'm asking you to please listen to the phone. Uh, a lot of people try to still listen to their computer. There's a bit of a delay, so it's a little confusing. So let's try again. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hello, good evening. Good evening to you. 
Yes, my wife is only busy. How are you, my dear? I am good. I have some good things and some bad things to talk about. Yes. All right. So, at this point, I want to say, well, congratulations to um, Sam Zip for winning the Inter High Championship. And secondly, I want to say, kudos to first and secondary school, junior and secondary school, you know, from our end, with such strong showing. They represented well. Now, we tried something else with our principal ship here in Nibi. You know, we are motivating and utilizing our young principals. And we have to recognize that everybody not the same. Some people is very exuberant and some people is very lucky. So you know we have an exuberant principal in Mrs. Paris. Yes. So we would go viral because she would let this students and she's very much into sports. So some people take that as an offense to come and get us because we had a lot of talk, a lot of chat. I just want to say that we went out and we did what we had to do. Um, a competition is not always about winning. It is sometimes about pitting ourselves against our own selves. So that we know last year we won um, a race in two minutes and this year we're going to run it in 1.5 minutes. So those are the things I want the public to walk away from with the competition. Not this animosity. We should be in a class where we could tell our friends, our classmates, do you win this test, but next time, and we're going to take it. 90% and I'm going to take it with 95 next time around. You know, so because it is with this competition we are able to be self-motivated. No, that is the good thing. The bad thing is, I want you to please fix the internet at the Chancellor Secondary School and a technical teacher and the children no longer learn with talk and chat. So I am humbled, I am not able to use the Wi-Fi properly in my department because it is only available at a certain end of the school and we can't take the phone machine on our heads and go out to the uh, to So please, 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 I beg you, fix that. I want to see the program grow. I want to see how people manage their money because they could sew and help themselves. It's not about sewing and being a tailor or a dressmaker. It's about sewing and being able to buy a pants that is too big or too small for one dollar and fix it and wear it instead of having to buy one for seventy dollars. So that is what it's about. So I am putting you on notice as Minister of Education right here. Being the overall head, please fix the internet. This may we could communicate more with the parents. A parent has to come home in order to use me wife at home. Some people say put data on the phone, but I'm not telling you the truth. I can't pay wife at home and pay data in school. And then when we can, I should to get another care. And I can speak it for real. All who want to do it twice, kudos to them. But I'm managing my money. Next thing about it, Mr. Um, Senior. I want us to get into renewable resources. Let us see what we can do with our plastic bottles. Let us reuse our containers. Let us not be too quick to throw it um, our jeans. Plans. Instead of buying a distress jeans, take the old one we have at home and make it into our own distress jeans. We, we really need to start managing our money. And we need to support the government, support when we talk about traveling and the airport. We have to find a new way forward, as you say, and we need to listen and evaluate rather than getting on the bandwagon to criticize and to look in the neighbor door to see where the neighbor got. You may see the neighbor eat shrimp oil, but you don't even know that your neighbor didn't even buy a shrimp. Mm. He went down the road to beg here and beg there. It's not about begging all the time, but it's about managing what we do have. All right. Well, um, thank you very much for that, Mavis. In relation to the internet at the schools, 
Um, in fact, I will have the Honorable Choi Liber look at that because we are uh, always trying to make the process of education uh, easier for our teachers and also for our students. So uh, I will certainly relay that message and see how we can resolve that situation as quickly as we can. So you have my commitment on that, okay? Thank you, sir. All right, good. Thank you very much. Um, in relation to the, the teachers and the principal and trying to get excited and get the kids revved up, I don't see a problem with that. I mean, it's all about school pride and school spirit. So I don't see why people should get upset about that. So that, to me, is unnecessary for to cause any anxiety among people. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Oh, good night. Good night to the honor of the TV. Yes, good, 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 night, good evening to you. Oh, so I always want to thank God for life. Thank God for the federation of think it maybe. And I think that if we live as one, we could be one of the most successful country in the whole entire world. We only got to do that. We got the four terrorists earlier. We got we got things. We don't say we 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 ain't got everything all right. But we can do better if we just live as one. No but I'm not Listen, you're talking about agriculture and talking about 2025. Now, do you think that the government needs it and think it good enough for 2025 to meet the quota for 2025 in agriculture farming, crop farming? Do you think so, Mark? Well, I, I, I don't know because I have not been paying close enough attention to sink kits. But I can tell you on Nevis, um, the Minister, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, is very confident that we could make our contribution um, by 2025. Some of the things that we are trying to put in place, um, especially in terms of poultry, we anticipate that we could uh, make that, that that commitment. So that is the ambition that Nevis has and uh, I have heard the Honorable Samuel Duggan speak and he's saying that Sinkits will also achieve so that together we can meet our commitment. But I, I have not physically been on Sinkits to go around to make my own yeah. assessment so I can only rely on what he has said. You are underground, what is it you are seeing? You are underground, so what is it you are seeing? No, what I, what I said, life start farming like meat and all those things in the 2025 all of that will be into it. I just cut farming. I am not sure what the precise details are in terms of what is included, um, but I do know it is certain categories, certain products, not everything. You is not you to say that, right? I believe agriculture department is supposed to come along this, this, your farm and get in with the people who got animals who are doing crop farming and all those things. And put a proposal to them, tell them what they want to, you know, encourage them. But I, 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 I got like that, I got, I got that. And I don't see nobody come around and encourage me about nothing. And I, I think, I think that if we want to admit this quarter from 2025, because I, I believe that, it's a, me, me, I believe me supposed to be in it too. Chicken, eggs, and all those things, because we bring in all those things from overseas, we bring in meat. And I, I don't see much attention paid to livestock farmers. I don't know for crop farmers. But I don't see much attention paid to crop farmers in St. I mean, livestock farmers. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't hear somebody that they, they got a, a cop, a cop, a cop, you know, must be on the, and, 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 and we have him, and every day that guy come on, and he talk about how the whole crop is improving and everything, and what they're planting you know, and what they're doing and so. And we're trying to involve with the government. Yes. So with the 2025 situation, that they, they, you know. And I believe that if we work as one, and the farmers them pull together as one, and the government work with the farmers them, I believe that they can do meet any quota for 2025. Not because we ain't getting the way how we supposed to get it. But I believe that we can meet the, the quota for 2025, especially in sweet potato and all those things, because it's still coming up. And not much sweet, put, not much sweet potato around. I, 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 I'm a, a crop farmer too, and I used to got plenty sweet potatoes. Up to now, people still look at me and tell me about sweet potatoes, and about over five years now, 
we really had no sweet potatoes like that. Okay. You know? Alright. So, before the mark, yes. Tony Berry, so can you tell you good night? You know Tony Berry? Of course, man. That's my people. We grew up in here. So, so tell you good night. Alright. Well, tell him I say good night. Right, okay, well. okay. okay, my brother. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for the comments and just again, excitement. Uh, interest about agriculture it's important we have to feed ourselves we have to find creative ways to do so let's go back to the phones good evening you're on the mark okay we lost that caller caller please call back in four six nine one six here we go good evening you're on the mark hello good night mark yes i can hear you now go ahead you can hear me okay. yes i'm glad that somebody calling and remind you of morning star because i don't think people do remember morning star and we there's some elders in morning star, right? And the, the law, especially, needs to concentrate. Caller, you keep dropping your voice. We need to hear what you're saying, please. Yes, I'm saying. Yes. That there's elders here in morning star. Yes. And we need, especially the law, to look at us. And when we make a complaint, to look into, it. apart from all the other things that happen here in morning mm -hmm. star. We do pay our taxes as well and we do exit. And it's not nice for the treatment that we are getting here this morning. Okay, caller, you keep dropping your voice. I'm not sure why. One minute I'm hearing you loudly, the next yes. minute you're whispering. Perhaps it's the phone. Okay. Yes. I'm saying that we, we, you know, we need to be looked at. We elders here in morning, sir. Yes. Need some law, right? And when we complain to the police, we need some help. Okay. Okay? Uh-huh. Uh, apart from all the other things. Because we, as elders, we still do pay our taxes. And we need to be recognized. So please remember I said that now. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Very grateful for that. Um, we do try insofar as our... Uh, seniors are concerned. Nevis has some of the finest seniors programs in the region and uh, certainly I would expect that the police will act professionally and when they're called they will respond in a professional way. So call I'm sure that they've heard you and certainly I'll take that on board because we really want all of our people here to be comfortable. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening you're on the mark. Mark Brantley this is Carlton. Good evening. Good evening brother. How are you? First thing I might say my heart was so warm to see that the inter-school, the school championship between St. Kitts and Nevis was, well, we had it in Nevis and it was such a success. I stood there for two days. I observed. I took notes. I look at certain things that what I would like to see improve and I was amazed with the bathroom facilities. Mm. I, I move around everywhere without showing myself. I didn't want to say much to anyone. I move around. I was totally amazed with the crowd on Sunday. Totally amazed. And I only wish that with the development between you and Dr. Ju, the friendliness, the maturity in which you all are conducting yourselves, I was hoping if something could be done where we can have the sport in Nevis sometime rather than the vision coming down here all the time. Mm -hmm. Mark, two things I want to draw to your attention and to Nevision and Ketishan. For about 10 years, there's a businessman in saying it's every week and I'm going to Nevis. I asked him to come with me. I will pay the bill, hotel everything. He never come once. Mm -hmm. Well, he decided to go to Nevis. And I wish I had taped his conversation when he rang me up to tell me, Mr. DuPont, I apologize to you for not going to Nevis all the years. He said, my whole life felt so different. I don't tell lies, eh? Mr. DuPont, I'm telling you, thank you. I decided when I thought I'm going to Nevis, I think about you. I went over, I rent a Jeep. I was shocked to, to see the development down at, um, where they call it, the place where I normally go down there to eat. What's the big Pin restaurant? Pin Pinnis Beach? Yeah. By Sunshine's? By Sunshine. Yes. He said he went to a restaurant close to Sunshine. 
he, they did some fish and some vegetables and so for him. You know what the guy told me? A Sunday time he going to Nevis by those places over there to have lunch. Mm. Mark, there's another guy came to me store last week. He said he hasn't been to Nevis in 30 years. But he want to go. I said I could do something for you. And I told him exactly what I would do for him. When I pick him up and I start driving him, he could not believe the progress of Nevis to 30 years ago. Mark, I was amazed. I want to say congratulations to Nevis for hosting that tournament. And so many people who I say all the time to, when you go to Nevis and you walk in that gate, you'll be shocked with the beauty of the stadium. And all in the store, they come back and say, do punch you right. But Mark, I got something important to say before I go off the phone. Because quite a number of people don't like me on radio these days. I am happy. You know why? God has given me a spirit to accept how people feel about me and respect what they say. But what I'm going to say tonight is very important for you to give me a couple minutes to read something what a very popular radio personality in St. Kitts said about an incident that happened in Nevis. I was right there, you know. I was in the same stand 10 minutes before the incident occurred, but I moved off. I went over two stands away. So up to now, I don't know exactly what happened because I didn't try to find out. But I want to read something that are very popular and I will want to say respected man in St. Kitts that a lot of people listen to and he teaches well, I understand from people who he taught that he's a very good teacher. These are some of the things that he wrote. Nevision bitterness towards Kittishan cannot be sweetened. The same behavior and conduct from many years ago when the vision stone or cricketers who had to run for their lives is the same bitter mindset and divisions have against petitions. We cannot even get along in a friendly sporting environment. Then the message cannot be any clearer. This is the time for the Republic of St. Kitts, goodbye to Nevis. Mm -hmm. A bilateral arrangement for them to come down and sell their mangoes can be worked out. I am very offended with this gentleman. The reason why I have not called his name is because I am thinking about buying some radio time to go on radio and tackle him, calling his name on this. Give me two more minutes, Mark. Can you? Yes, man. Go ahead. Give me two more minutes. You know why I want you to give me two more minutes? Mark, take it from me. I don't know how long I'm going to live. But there's nothing to my life sweeter than seeing petition and division getting along the way I saw on Sunday. Nothing to me. No money I could make in my store can, can cover the relationship, if it could continue between St. Kitts and Nevis. Listen to this last part. <sighs> Born in rice and pepper in your soup. But hear this one. Lack of fear shield. Are deeply engraved issues in the hearts, mind, and soul of Nevision. And it takes very little for the slightest disagreement to boil over into actual stabbing incident in Nevis. Now, we, even if we had something like that in Nevis, for an educator, for a man who people highly esteem and respect in this country, this foolishness that he did is so unbelievable that people got to be careful, Mark, who we listen to and who we pay attention to in this life. Otherwise, we'll go straight. In the Bible, in Proverbs 13:20. The Bible asks us to be careful who we hang out with. Because the man who hangs out with the wise become wise, and the man who have dealing with the stupid will fear badly. Sometimes I say to people like that I didn't attend school. Because it seemed to me the dumbness that I got much brighter than these guys who went to university. This guy who wrote this 
went to university, you know. Mm. And Mark, the reason why I brought up this is because we passed these things long ago. But I'm going to tell you what I believe happening to him because somebody going to tell him tonight that I talk about this. I'll tell you what is happening to him. He's jealous of the friendship between you and Dr. Jew. But Mark, before I go off the phone, I want to say something to you. God going to help you. You're one of the smartest and most brilliant politicians that I've seen in this country, in my mind. It's only me. I don't, I don't want nobody to tell me anything, what I think, and put nothing in my mind. This is me. You must continue trying your best to be clear on what you're doing. And you must also understand that you must continue as well to work with Dr. Jew to bring as closer as bring us closer and closer together as much as you can. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, um, my friend and brother, Mr. Dupont, for your call. Um, I'm a little, I didn't see the comments you have mentioned, but I'm a little disheartened because I think that comments like that are backwards. They, they take us back to a time. We talk about Nivision Stone in Sink It's Cricketers. I mean, when? That must have been back when Noah built the ark. We, we must sometimes move beyond where we have been and progress can only happen when our people decide that it is time to move forward. I have heard the comments about Bratcher saying bones and rice and pepper in soup. Uh, Nivisions believe that those comments were made. Many kitchens said the comments were never made. But the comments represented a sentiment that many Nivisions felt. But those comments... I would remind people that Mr. Bratch, I believe, passed in the 1970s. 1970s to now is <laughs> over 50 years. So we need to start to move on. And Mr. DuPont, I will tell you, a lot of angst that I have seen from some is because Nevis stepped up to the plate at this interhigh and delivered. The meat was of no less quality than any meat that would have been held at the Kim Collins Stadium. And as I said at the intro to the show, we have experience with large events because there's no event larger than inter-primary sports in Nevis. But it's almost as if some wanted us to fail so that it could reinforce in their minds some sense of one being superior and the other being inferior. Those days are gone. Those days are long gone. And I have made the argument in the political context, in any context, that the days of expecting somebody from Nevis to ride in the back of the bus because that is his status and position, that those days are over. And the quicker that we all recognize that we are one people and we should be pulling in the same direction and this sense of I'm better than you because I happen to be born on this island or the next it's really foolishness. So, Mr. Dupont, those comments are regrettable. I don't know who made them, but you have dealt with it quite appropriately. And to say to our people that we must shy away from these types of comments and commentaries because they don't help to advance us one way. The comment about Nivisions should be allowed to come to sink it's to sell mango. It's offensive. Just like the comment that I referred to where somebody say, oh, they're not going to stay there, they're not going to KFC. It's offensive because we are not defined by not having KFC or Sink is defined by not having mangoes. We are one country. And I just feel that we need to get beyond some of that pettiness. That's what I call it because it's really petty. You know, and, and, and to, to recognize the progress that is being made on both sides of the narrows because we are one country. And progress in Sinkits should be progress in Nevis, and progress in Nevis should be progress in Sinkits. I have no doubt in my mind, Mr. DuPont, where we are going. I believe Nevis is strapped. We always find it difficult to execute our larger um, projects because, of course, we uh, still feel that we have not had uh, a equal access to the resources of the country, particularly the resources from the Citizenship by Investment Program. 
But you make a valid point in relation to Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew has demonstrated a willingness to work with Nevis. And I welcome that. And I've said so publicly. He could have taken a, an approach that his predecessors would have taken of $1 to Nevis is $1 less for Sinkits, of, of, of bouncing our checks in Nevis, of doing things in a particular way. He has taken a different approach, and I welcome that. The first time we sat down and we engaged, he and I, I said to him, I am prepared to work with you because Nevis and Sinkis need to work together. And the constant antagonism at the political level is unhelpful. The irony is, as you say, that some people appear now offended. And some people in high and low places appear offended. That Dr. Drew and I, I have sat with Dr. Drew and taken a photo with him and posted it to social media. And the people go crazy, cussing and abusing and carrying on because Dr. Drew and I supposed to be enemies. We're supposed to be fighting each other and saying awful things about each other. I have said to Dr. Drew, Dr. Drew, if there is a matter that requires some intervention from me, I'm prepared to call you. And I will say this publicly, Mr. DuPont, because it is true. Anytime I've called Dr. Terence Drew, if he doesn't answer me immediately, I know that within five minutes he's going to call me back. And vice versa. That is the type of relationship that we have had in terms of reaching out, communicating. Sometimes I reach out to him, he's not on island, but it doesn't matter. Because he recognizes that the office of the Premier and the office of the Prime Minister must have a relationship. It's as simple as that. So, some people are actually very offended and upset by it. Even the coming of the sports to Nevis, which only came to Nevis because Kim Collins was under construction. I see comments say, oh, you know, they're giving everything to Nevis now. Nevis actually rescued the TVC sports. That's what we did, you know. Because we had the vision to have an IAAF certified track in Nevis, the sports could come to Nevis. We didn't say, well, y'all, Kim, Kim Collins are under construction as our business. We stadium is not available. We said, no, come, come. That's what brothers are supposed to do. Work with each other. Strengthen each other. And I'm certain that those youngsters who came to Nevis and had that experience would have had a good experience. Some of them, who knows, might have been the first time that they have a chance to see this part of their country. So those comments, Mr. DuPont, from this person are unfortunate. And I just put them in the out of order bundle. I believe that right thinking members of this country need to apply their minds, apply their hearts, apply their strengths to move in the country forward as one. That's what is critical and necessary. Let's go back to the phones and take some more calls. Good evening, you're on the mark. Good evening again, Brother Mark. Yes, good evening to you. Brother yeah, Mark, when I hear a statement like that, you know, I, I am a man, and I, I, I always want to see Nevis and think it as a as one. And the negative statement there, when Mr. Kaiser, you can just talk about this gentleman wrote as an educator, I believe we should take back that. No, but Mark, let me tell you something. This going to Nevis with this food, when I hear that, I say, by that, 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 that will be something good. Between Sinkit and Nevis now and pull us closer together. Because going out to Nevis, I believe the children them joy for it too. Because some of the children them maybe they never go to Nevis. I believe some of these old these elder parents never go to Nevis now, some of them. Because some people come from Nevis and they 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 make back up Nevis for the balance of their life. They, 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 they just live in Sinkit and they come down to Nevis down here. So that was uh, something good to bring the federation closer to, uh, you know, instead of criticizing. But let me tell you now, Mark, if we don't take this bit of politics out of everything, uh, every event that happened between St. Nicholas, we will never, we never get nowhere. We got to take, and I, I believe that not only in the minority now, not only in the minority, I believe the majority of people, we like to see it and want to see it. Sink it and Nevis go fear with one another. 
That's why I talk about the, 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 the agriculture with the corporation with the agriculture with 2025. Because if me, we should do it well. Because we, we, I think we got even better than any of Me, we got no, let's let play land and so right? But I made to understand these farmers up there are doing very, well, very, well, very, very well. Pumpkin, potatoes, and different things. And, Mark, to make a, a comment like that, I believe as an educator, they will say, who you that because of politics, I believe that these men just want to see the country and the federation just got right all the time. We cannot live like that all the time. They see what happening all, all over the world, different world. They don't see what happening. In New Venezuela, I'm going up here with a little land for oil. Down in the Middle East, all over. Man, let me try to live as one man. Let me try to one of brothers. Let me try to, let me try to our brothers and sisters see it and down with the negative political thing. Election every five years. When election come come around again, which we don't want to run our country. You understand? Everything never to be negative. You could criticize, but criticize constructively. You understand? How you can we get away from this political rat man? You ain't, you ain't taking us away. All right, brother. All right, I got you, and I agree with you. But some of these comments are not necessarily always political. What I mean by that is they're not coming from the politicians. A lot of them come from people who claim they're pundits and claim that they have some public influence. And they make these comments to try to infect people with their same degree of negativity. Um, some of it comes because I don't like Mark Brantley, so let me put up something. Right? And they, 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 they wrap themselves into knots over that. Or oh, I don't like Terence Drew, so let me put up something. Or oh, I don't like whoever. And, and it's unfortunate because I think at the end of the day, we have to try to uplift each other and uplift the country. We're going to have our differences. We're going to have our differences. Right? But we must focus on seeing how we can use our energies to push us forward rather than the constant effort to drag us down. And as I said, for some, they are not comfortable with the idea that the days of some people in the back of the bus, those days are over. You know, in the United States, when they had discrimination and all of that, and the black people had to ride in the back of the bus, and Rosa Parks say, she, she's sitting down, she now stand up, go, she cheered to a white man and think, the change came and people were upset about it. People upset about it, and I'm saying to our people, there's no need to fear change. There's no need for anybody in Sinkis to fear that there's development in Nevis. There's no need for anybody in Nevis to fear that there's development in Sinkis. We are moving forward as a single country. Let us do it. And whether it's geothermal, whether it's healthcare, whether it's whatever, wherever we can cooperate and push forward, let us do it because it inures to the benefit of us all. Let me go back to the phones. The phones are lighting up. Good evening. You're on the mark. Yes, good evening, Mr. Bradley. Yes, I'm good evening. Sorry, from the topic about the sports and everything. That's all right. This is a young uh, um, mother here. I currently work in Nevis. I've been work I'm from St. Kitts, but I've been working in Nevis for the past two months. And along with myself and a few other persons I know, we work in Nevis, all from St. Kitts, and uh, we travel every day to and fro, um, using Islander and using the port facilities. Now I know. Of course, we have to pay for the upkeep of the facility. But I mean, we were told that we can write a letter um, and get the fee reduced to a dollar because these five dollars, simple as it sounds, is added up every day, mm -hmm. every week, every month. Is there anything that you can do to help us out? What What do you say you wrote? So what was the response? Yeah, but it, it, it has been months. It takes months just to get a simple yes or no. Who did you ordinate? May I ask who did you write to? Did you write to NASPA? Yes, I did. Okay. All right. Let me um let me give you my number. It's mm -hmm. six six two six zero zero three. Six six two. Six zero zero three. Thank you very much. And if you can send me a WhatsApp after the show, I will reach out to NASPA because we do try to accommodate people who because of work have to travel back and forth daily. Yes. We do that for the for the workers at Park Hyatt, for example, who work here. Um, who from Nevis mm -hmm. and we offer that same facility to those who are in that position because I entirely agree with you that yes. it will add up if you have to be paying that every day so we try to accommodate and if you've written you should have had a response so send me a whatsapp and I will follow up on it for you 
Thank you very much. Okay, you're most welcome. And have a good I'll, evening. Okay, you have a good evening as well. And I like to hear that. See, this lady calling saying she's from Sinkets. She's working in Nevis. She's going back and forth. People in Nevis working in Sinkets, going back and forth. That's how the country should run. That's how the country should function. And we in Nevis have seen that vision. We build a water taxi facility, make it even easier for people to go back and forth. That's what you call progress. That's development. That's vision. And I just want our people to understand that there's a plan and the plan is unfolding. Let's go back to the phones, take some more calls. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hello? Uh, good evening. Yes, you're on the air. Uh, go ahead, can please. I, can I remind, thank you, and Nevis people are one and they will always be be one. And then that, that cannot wash out. The majority of think it's people and divisions. And as for Dr. Drew, the Jews are from Brown Pasture. That's where they originate from. And we will always be one thank you, and Nevis. Hmm. So please, stop all these rubbish. All right. Because it sounds really stupid. Thank you very much for that. And you make an interesting comment that most Kittitians trace their roots to Nevis. And that always fascinates me because when I speak to my Kittitian brothers and sisters, they will always tell you their grandmother from Rollins, their grandfather from Brick Hill, their mother from Gingerland, their father from Charleston. There is a level of, of lineage, if you will that connects an umbilical cord that connects Sinkets and Nevis you know and and when I hear I went to a place in St. Paul's a shop there and I was shocked at the number of people in St. Paul's who traced their roots directly to Nevis people in Newtown people all across even the former Prime Minister used to say that he fathered from Cotton Young until he forget so th th that was the reality let's go back to the phones we the, 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 that, that call has hung up but please call back in. 869-469-1616 and 1700. So yes, even the former Prime Minister used to boast. Father from Cotton Ground. He eventually forgot that his father was from Cotton Ground. But petitions trace their roots in large measure. To Nevis. National hero Joseph and France from Nevis. He's actually from Nevis. So, you know, let us, as you say, try to focus on the things that unite us rather than the few things that divide us. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Mark? Yes, brother. I want to remind petitions of something else. When I opened a business in Nevis 20 years ago, I used to make more money in Nevis than in St. Kitts. I had a store in Nevis. I had one in Bastia. I had one in Anguilla in the valley. And when I fly to, I used to fly to Anguilla, go up to Nevis, stay in St. Kitts the same week all the time. I pick up more money all the time in Nevis. That is something we could think about. If we start to open in business in the different country, the vision's coming down. Look at Franklin Brand. Very successful man. Watch the bakery he have right here next to where I'm living. You can't get in the bakery at morning. Hmm. I understand from somebody today that he's a kid, he's a vision. Yes. And something else impressed me, Mark. When I came from the stadium Sunday evening, I couldn't believe the crowd to come over the peninsula from, from the, the dock how you all built up there because six, seven boats can leave with people. The problem we had Sunday night is something that the government in St. Kitts must take into consideration. I don't get my chance to talk to the government because people don't listen to me. They need to hurry up and fix over the peninsula to match over Nevis so we can have a smooth flow. Do you know the guy who rent me the jeep? When I drove there to catch the ferry, I called back the guy, I called the guy who rent me the jeep and said, look, I don't have to leave the key with the the security tonight, you know. Hundreds of people here. Could you come for the jeep while I'm here? That is the action. But when the boat them reach down to sink it, because only one boat can go into the dock, they have to stay out in the stream. So we take a, we, it took us a long time to come home. That is the next thing. The other thing I want to say quickly to petitions, they must remember the contributions Nivision made to think it's over the years. I was reminded today 
about somebody named Wendell Lawrence, Suswin Mills, mm -hmm. and Willie Doe. I didn't know these people from Nevis. Mm -hmm. But Willie Doe was one of the persons when I was a young man growing up, he inspired me. Suswin Mills was an educator if my mind served me right. Mm -hmm. So how could we ever think so low of the vision about selling mangoes? And the last thing I want to say before I go off the radio tonight is there is a part here in the document which says lack of fair share and deeply engraved issues in the heart, mind, and soul of the visions is a problem to them. Well, who in charge of fair share? I am not, I am not making this call tonight for confusion. St. Kitts has always been in charge of fair share. So how could fair share talk? come in as if the vision had something to do with Fashi. I don't know if you catch the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. hey, look, that, that decision look. does not lie in Nevis. That's what you're saying. That decision isn't for Nevis. But listen to me. If this gentleman only getting away with these things because the station, them, some station wouldn't give me radio time. I am a serious problem in this country. But I love God. And I like people. And remember this, evil will always present itself, but we don't have to fall to the evil. And we are not fighting against blood and flesh. Sylvie and Henry taught me that one day. I read it in the Bible, it never catch me like when I heard Sylvie and Henry saying, our people, we are acting like we're fighting against flesh and blood. Mark, I still draw us over weekend sport in Nevis. And the week before I was there too, you know, mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday, Excellent. May God continue to lift the spirit of the vision and their competitive spirit was so good in the track. It warmed my heart. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you, brother. I really appreciate that uh, second call and let's stick with the phones. I think we have somebody else who's holding. Good evening, you're on the mark. Okay, we've lost that caller. Caller, please call back in. 869-469-1616. 869-469-1700. Uh, Mr. DuPont, if you start to list out the individuals who have contributed to sink it and to the development of the country, I think you will be here all night. Many, of course, moved to sink it for work. They made their contribution over there. You mentioned, you know, a few, Willie Doe, but, I mean, Nathaniel France, uh, Joseph Nathaniel France, whom the hospital is named after, was a division. These are people who are the backbone of the labor movement and the labor party. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hello. Hey, good night, Mark. Yes, please. Good evening. Sorry. What do you say on the fulfillment with CARICOM? Uh, okay. Um, thanks for the question. Are you have any other questions? No, no. I just okay. want to know what is your take. Yeah, all right. I think that um, I made mention two weeks ago that uh, uh, on that matter we spent some time on it and that i feel that what we need in terms of caricom and the free movement of persons is a carve out for the smaller islands we need the smaller islands to have some level of control because we could very easily be overrun because of our tiny size compared to some of the other members of caricom as i said and i've said before if 10,000 of us moved to Jamaica, Jamaica would not notice. But if 10,000 Jamaicans moved here, overnight our health care system, our school system, our housing system would collapse because we could not accommodate. So that is my view, but I am waiting to hear from the Honorable Prime Minister what the position he has taken on behalf of the country might be. Okay. I have not okay, heard that you. yet. Okay, thank you. All right, you're most welcome. Yeah. Right. So the position in relation to... Um, Nivisions and Sinkits. As I said, I feel that when you look throughout the landscape of Sinkits, you know, you mentioned Willie Doe, you mentioned Suswin Mills, you mentioned Wendell Lawrence, who was a person there for quite some time. In fact, those Lawrence brothers, a lot of them have made their life in Sinkits. Um, you know, the head of TDC now, um, Earl Kelly from from Nevis. You you mentioned people like Franklin Brand from Nevis who have invested and had business there. And you could go on and on and on in terms of the number of individuals who have come. Stu Gumba Brown, Henry Brown, leading lawyer from right in Brown Hill, has made his life in Sinkis. That's not anything that's new 
or unusual and people have made their contributions and continue to make their contribution as they're free to do. You know, if you want to get up tomorrow, you're born in Sandy Point and you say, I'm going to go Cairn and make my life in Cairn. I'm going to move to Bastia and make my life in Bastia. Nobody thinks that that is strange. So why should it be seen as odd if you decide I'm going to leave uh, Bastia and make my life in Charleston or I'm going to leave Charleston and make my life in Bastia? In one country, people are free to move around and to make their contribution. But if I were to start a list, the number of divisions who have come to Sinkits and have had an impact in Sinkits in a positive way, we'll be here all night. We'll be here all night. And the same is not true the other way. Because very few petitions have come to Nevis because of how the structure of the economy was set up. More divisions went to Sinkits to look for work and decided to live and stay than the other way around. Mr. DuPont, you may not even remember, but before there was a six farm in Nevis, people like Van Samri and all of those went to Sinkits, Joseph Parry. They had to go to Sinkits to go to grammar school. And many of them stayed, the best and the brightest from Nevis, were encouraged to stay to take civil service jobs, etc. You think about people like Hugh Rollins, our former Chief Justice, brilliant man. All of these are divisions who spent many years in Sinkits working and being a part of the life and times and development of the island of St. Christopher. But there were divisions who went there and made their contribution. So I don't think there's a need for us to even discuss that because the facts are too clear. You go there along from me, leave the airport, there you're on a the highway. What do you call something F.T. Williams Highway? Where F.T. Williams from? The Nevis people? Obadiah Williams, who went to Sinkits and did so well in terms of education, where they from? So I just feel that if you get down and start going down that road, you really, we're doing a disservice to ourselves and to our country. So let's leave that. We're going to take one call as our final call. We have about three minutes left. And so if somebody wants to call in, 469-1616 and 469-1700. I feel that our people need to come to realization that the country is growing, the country is developing. The people of Nevis and the people of St. Kitts now have access to amenities, access to infrastructure. This is not the days when Nevis had no electricity, Nevis had no, no, no roads. Nevis had, I mean, I remember speaking to Dr. Kennedy Simmons who told me when the Christina sank that there was no doctor on Nevis. He had to come over, I believe, he said, at night. And they had to land on the little airstrip over there with cars parked up to try and provide some light. Let's take this call. We'll give this caller two minutes to end the show. Caller, good evening. You're on the mark. Hello? Mark? Yes, your final call. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Good night. Uh, my father raised a very important point tonight about people working in Nevis and people working in Thinkit. Question that I've always had and wondered: Why can't we have the same one dollar charge that is in Charleston over at Wally? Because we spent millions of dollars to do that facility, and NASPA's position was that they wanted some ability to recoup some of that. In addition to which, we thought that that facility, we didn't anticipate that that facility would have the traffic that it does, because the intention was that it'd be a bit more costly than the facility in town, so as not to compete. Uh, with the ferries that were going out of Charlestown. So those were but the two we, main we reasons for it. Well, we don't know when that was spent. We know that money was recently spent at Wally, and that was the reason that influenced that particular decision to allow so NASPA and ability the to recoup. To make back the money over at Wally in, in five years in a short time. Well, I don't think the money can be made back in short in five years, but the intention was that NASPA would be able to earn something from that facility. People have a choice. They can go from Charlestown or they can go from Wally. That is a choice of travel that they have, and they determine that choice. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the banner struck up. It means we have to go. I'm very grateful for all the calls, all the people who have participated in the show, those online and those who took the opportunity to call in and to share their views and opinions. Please, tomorrow, all roads lead to the ETW Park for the agri Expo. 
Agri Expo. And uh, I again commend our Deputy Premier Minister of Agriculture and his entire team. We look forward to an excellent show tomorrow over the next few days. We look forward to welcoming our friends from Sabre and Stacia who normally come in large numbers. And of course, our brothers and sisters from St. Kitts. Nevis is a place to be. We welcome you. Thank you. Thank God. And may God bless you and keep you and keep you safe. Have a pleasant night's rest, everyone. And remember that this show is rebroadcast tomorrow at 1 p.m. right here on Vaughn Radio. That's our show. Thank you. Good night. And God bless you. of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Nevis Broadcasting Company Limited or its advertisers. With all the power from the...